The Lake Orion DDA hosted an informational meeting regarding the purchase of the property currently occupied by Lake Orion Lumber Company. The Orion Firefighters Association hosted its biggest fundraiser of the year, allowing them to continue their charitable work in the community. The Orion Area Chamber celebrated International Women's Day by hosting its Women in Business Conference at Paint Creek Country Club. And the fifth graders from all of Lake Orion schools competed in the library's 38th Battle of the Books. Coming up, we'll let you know who came out on top. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Marco Ifrady. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. The landscape of downtown Lake Orion will soon undergo significant changes with several parcels slated for development over the next few years, including the property that greets northbound travelers heading into the village. On the evening of Tuesday, March 7th, the Lake Orion DDA hosted an informational meeting at Village Hall to give an update and take questions on the proposed development of the parcel of property that is currently occupied by Lake Orion Lumber Company. DDA Director Molly Lalone welcomed those in attendance and led the presentation alongside architect Scott Reynolds and village manager Darwin McCleary. She told us the parcel has not been purchased yet, but if the DDA buys the property, it would allow them to control how it will be developed. Um, if you look at um, the example that we provided, that was a developer who was ready to come in and they had 94 parcels there. and. Uh, no public amenities. There were no public amenities there. So we're, we want to change the conversation at that corner. We want it to be downtown Lake Orion's corner, not a developer's corner. We want this to contribute to our downtown and to our um, residents. We want to give them something that they can use. And we've got several different uses that we have planned. Although renderings were projected on the screen, we were told nothing is final and plans continue to evolve with the DDA encouraging public input. I was very focused on parking. I was very concerned about whether or not we are going to have parking. But what came out of the design shred is people wanted a des designated, dedicated event space so that they could gather and um, it would relieve some of the um, congestion in the downtown um, when events are going on corner of Atwater and Broadway is kind of the initial parcel leading into what would be downtown right before you break off into to Broadway Street. Um, so we find that there's a key opportunity with this parcel to either uh, provide an architecturally significant building on the corner, um, have an event space, and I think that was the, the most interesting piece about making sure the public was involved in the process was uh, we discussed that a, an event space or a permanent event space would be very important to uh, the community, including myself as a resident um, that would be there and that, that hopefully would draw events um, not only um, through downtown but into additional pieces of, of the village uh, when we have great events going on. Should the DDA move forward with the project, a $5 million bond would be used to purchase the property and the DDA would seek out partners to develop possible retail and pres residential projects. We want to use the funds that we have left over after the purchase as seed money to help um, attract um, private and public partners and then the funds that they use will help us get this project done and that'll help us pay you know we just will continue doing more projects as we can but we feel like there's an opportunity for additional economic investment space uh, specifically that of uh, restaurant retail components something that would be engaging of the public engaging with the walkability of downtown um, and we do feel that there would be additional opportunities um, whether it be townhomes at, at the rear of the parcel that was some of the the earlier concept uh, drawings that we were looking at and then the other opportunity would be the purple building um, in these these concept renderings we could have a second floor that could be office or it could be residential and we do envision that to be um, significantly less dense than what a private developer would bring in because we're taking a look at all the other um, community components that we want to incorporate into this design. Not only the um, retail residential component, but also the walkability, the event space, additional parking that supplements the success of downtown and the existing businesses and events that we already have down here. 
The DDA board will have to make a decision soon as the current owners of Lake Orient Lumber Company want to sell the property as soon as possible. The DDA encourages residents to submit questions and concerns to office at downtownlakeorient.org. The next meeting of the DDA board will take place on Tuesday, March 21st at 6.30 p.m. at Village Hall. Not only do Orion Township firefighters risk their lives to protect residents and their property, but they also give back to the community. Recently, a major fundraiser returned after a two-year hiatus. On the evening of Saturday, March 4th, more than 150 firefighters, dignitaries, and members of the community arrived at Paint Creek Country Club for the 36th Firemen's Charity Ball. Hosted by the Orion Firefighters Association, attendees enjoyed dinner, music, and had many chances to come away with fantastic raffle prizes donated by local sponsors. So we have a, a, a myriad of different uh, raffle items, some premium raffles like a trip around the world or a, a trip you could anywhere you want to go to. We have a phenomenal Jack Daniels uh, a donation package and then a host of raffle items uh, down the way from kayaks to a Blackstone to uh, tool sets to Gucci sunglasses. The event returned after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID pandemic. It is by far the OFFA's biggest fundraiser of the year and allows for nonprofit organizations to pursue its mission of giving back to the community. So we have a, a host of different uh, uh, ventures, one of them being the uh, Miracle League Field. We sponsor and we, we provided funding to the scoreboard for the Miracle League Field. So in addition to that, we have the Adaptive League within the township. The Adaptive League is a, need, is a league for special needs children in the township. And the OFFA was the first group to ever sponsor this baseball team. And so we provide them funding every year, no questions asked. In addition to that, we have a scholarship fund for first responders, a burnout fund in case you're burned out of your home, and other uh, charities and events throughout the community that we, use, that we help support, in addition to uh, helping local kids and families at Christmas time. For more information on the OFFA's efforts in the community, you can send an email to Orion Fire Association at gmail.com. You can also find them on Facebook. Oakland County recently announced that 29 senior centers from all over Oakland County will receive grants ranging from $25,000 to $250,000 to improve services and facilities, and our own Orion Center is one of those recipients. As part of the county's American Recovery Plan Act, Orion Township will receive $250,000, which they will have to match using COVID funds to construct a new deck and an ADA-compliant sidewalk. It's something the township has dreamed of doing since the construction of the Orion Center in 2011. Excited, definitely very excited because I word was that there was not not everyone got it, so you know you're a little nervous. Um, so just excited to be able to bring something to the center, brand new. I know it's all of our members are going to love it, so just really excited. The township is hoping to use the new deck for luncheons and events. It can act as a meeting space for clubs or senior citizens can just gather and socialize. So we actually had the architects out this morning. He was going over all of the rough draft of what we want in place. Uh, we'll go out to bid for the construction of it this summer and then hopefully start after those are accepted. So hopefully by next summer we'll be able to sit out and enjoy it. Yeah. Other senior centers will use the grant to upgrade kitchens, roofs, meet ADA requirements, and create pickleball courts, new park space, and recreational activities. The county has also created the new position of Director of Older Adult Services to make sure older residents are aware of all the resources available to them. Love in the Name of Christ, or Love Inc., is a nonprofit organization that links churches, volunteers, and service agencies to provide assistance to those in need. Recently, the organization had its largest fundraiser of the year. On Saturday, March 4th, approximately 140 members of the community gathered at Indian Wood Golf and Country Club for the Share the Love event. Benefiting Love, Inc., those in attendance enjoyed food and dancing and took part in silent and live auctions. So this is our Share the Love event. Um, we're so excited to have folks here actually in person. We haven't done anything like this in about two and a half years, so we're really great. You know, we're happy to have everybody gathered in person to be able to share all the exciting things that we're doing at Love Inc. We're just so grateful for all of our relationships in the community and we couldn't do it without our board, our staff, our volunteers, and our donors and our sponsors. The money raised at the event helps the organization achieve their goals, including offering a community meals, 
a clothes closet, beds, laundry services, and more. Yeah, so what we're doing is moving more into transformational ministry and it'll help us build relationships with folks, help us start our um, faith and finance, our managing money classes so we can actually move with folks, not just give them that handout, but help them, you know, in the long run. For more information on the services Love, Inc. provides, you can call 248-693-4357 or visit loveincofnoc.org. What started out as a small event inside the Orion Township Public Library almost 40 years ago has grown into a massive competition that nurtures a student's love of reading. On the morning of Saturday, February 25th, fifth graders representing all of Lake Orion schools gathered at Walden Middle School for the 38th annual Battle of the Books competition. The students formed 27 teams and were challenged to read nine books, which were revealed last November. The Orion Township's library's youth services staff came up with 200 questions and whittled them down to 50, asking the teams to submit the correct title and author for a possible maximum total of 100 points. We read the summer before, so we read a bunch of books and pick the top 10 books we like, and we announce the titles in November at the kickoff at the library, so they've had about three, three to four months, depending on the timing to read the books, um, uh, prepare their teams, and study for battle. It is kind of like a year-round process for them. As soon as they're done with one, they immediately have to start planning details for the next. Um, and yeah, like you said, it, it starts with title planning early on, and you know they're eventually announced in November, and several meetings, uh, virtual and otherwise, with teams throughout the process. Um, the kids make fun videos uh, to sort of, you know, yeah. Uh, present the books in fun ways throughout so it's 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 a whole long process and it looks like uh, everybody has a good time doing it. A few days later on Wednesday March 1st the teams arrived at Lake Orion High School for the finale party where the winners were revealed. Head of Youth Services Ashley Lehman welcomed the teens and their family members then introduced the guest speaker. Author Laura Chauvin wrote the last fifth grade of Emerson Elementary a novel in verse that chronicles the experiences of 18 students over the course of the school year. The book was one of the nine titles selected to be a part of this year's Battle of the Books competition. I think it's a wonderful program. I love seeing how geeked out kids get about reading and books. You know, you have to give credit to teachers and librarians who run these programs that um, having something like Battle of the Books, it just gives kids an extra way to engage with reading beyond, you know, having a book that they take home and read or read in the classroom. And um, to be creative in the way that they interact with books through their costumes, their team names, um, and make it feel like a celebration, which it is. Reading is a celebration. Following the author's presentation, each team was called upon stage for photo ops and to collect a swag bag, and then the awards were handed out. Receiving the award for best team name was the Trick or Treaters, that's T-R-E-A-D-E-R-S. The award for best costume went to the Sugar Sweet Readers, and most team spirit went to the Ranch Readers, which included one student dressed as a bottle of ranch dressing. Finishing in third place with 91 points was the team known as S'more Books. Coming in second with 93 points was the Rainbow Readers and named champion of the 2023 Battle of the Books with a perfect score of 100 was Team Fairy Tales from Orion Oaks Elementary. I got really excited and I started shaking and I got a stomachache when I was like, when the, the second, to, second place team got called, I was like, that means we won. And I kept telling the team that we're going to win because we got every single question right. And they're just like, well, we don't know if we spelled it right and everything. And when we found out we won, I was like, oh my God, I got really excited. I, I, I was like shaking and I was like mentally freaking out because um, like my costume took forever and reading the books took forever. I quizzed myself and I read the books like a thousand times. And I felt really good when um, the t like a kid on a bus I'm not going to say names, but um, <laughs> they were also in Battle of the Bucks, and they said that they were going to win. But I, I felt like, I'm not really proving them wrong, but I just felt good that we won. Well, I was really happy. I couldn't even explain how happy I was. It was just kind of insane. <laughs> and if the chair was alive, it, it would be dead because I was squeezing it so hard. Um, I was really excited because I couldn't really believe that we won. That's awesome. Why did you want to take part in this? Did you did you know about Battle of the Books before? 
Yeah, because my sister did it um, in fifth grade too, and I kind of like got involved in it, and I thought it was interesting, so I wanted to do it too. My exact words and tone of voice. <laughs> and how did how did you spend the last few months since November preparing? Reading, just on my couch, reading, sometimes taking a break for eating and drinking water, but other than that, just in my book. Now, there's probably second and third and fourth graders out there who are thinking about taking part in Battle of the Books. What, would you, what advice would you give them? What would you say to them? Do it. Do it right now. It's amazing. <laughs> it's always fun when you see the kids that gravitate toward books because, you know, they're going to be future uh, customers, maybe even future librarians if we put the right spark in them. But, yeah, um, everybody finds their little niche, and um, we're happy to have kids that love books as much as they do. We hope they, they get out of this event. Uh, that reading is fun, that reading isn't always just an assignment, that you can find books that you, re you really like. You can find books you like that you didn't think you would like from this program because we make them read books from a lot of different genres and different styles of books that they may not pick up on their own. And we find a lot of times the kids come back and say, oh, I never would have read that book, but I love it. It's my new favorite author. So that's the most exciting part. For more information about upcoming programs and services, visit orionlibrary.org. International Women's Day encourages the world to celebrate women's achievements while calling out inequality. Recently, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosted an event that celebrated women in business, and ONTV's Tessa Penzian was there. On Wednesday, March 8th, more than 100 women and some men gathered at the Paint Creek Country Club for the fourth annual Women in Business Conference. Hosted by the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce, the event coincided with International Women's Day for the first time. Participants enjoyed lunch, received gift bags, and listened to inspirational messages from three keynote speakers. Oh, we're super excited to host our fourth annual um, Women in Business Conference. I came here to the Chamber four months ago yesterday, and when I saw that they had a Women in Business Conference, I was super excited to have it on International Women's Day. It just seemed like such a natural fit. So we're able to celebrate this beautiful day with 100 plus people um, and kind of be part of a greater movement than just in Orion Township. Speaking at the event were Mary Kramer of Crane Communications, WJR anchor and reporter Marie Osborne, and the Honorable Julie Nicholson of the 52nd District Court. First of all, I, I love seeing so many people in one room, especially all these women in one room. And when I was asked to speak, one of the, I asked them, I said, what do you want me to talk about? And she said, there's really no set program. Just tell everybody what your experience is. So I, I'm hopeful that I, by speaking about my path, it opened up some people's eyes to be open to other paths in their career because what we set out to do isn't necessarily what we end up doing. Anytime you can network with this type of group, this is a group of accomplished women. There's a lot of entrepreneurs in this group, so some of the things I talked about they could readily identify with. And so anytime you can talk with people like this and get to know them a little better, um, you, I, I sat next to somebody whose husband grew up down the street from me. So I mean, those kinds of things are always fun, but more importantly, being around women like this and groups like this kind of gives you the fuel to continue on in your career as well. Today's International Women's Day and so to have a group of women, there were some guys here too so that's great that they were brave enough to come out, but uh, the idea of being in a room full of women, it's still a very empowering feeling and I think it's important. Um, when I grew up in the business, I was often the only woman in the room. So I think it's changed over time, but those of us with the gray hair who can remember when it wasn't the case, I think it's, rem it's important to remember the importance of women getting together and talking about the issues that are important to them and helping one another. The Orion Area Chamber has multiple events scheduled for the remainder of the year, including six gatherings planned for its OWL Group, or Orion Women Leaders, the first of which will take place in April. For more information, visit orionareachamber.org. From the Paint Creek Country Club in Orion Township, I'm Tessa Penzine, reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Tessa. 
And finally, pop culture enthusiasts will have a full calendar of events and cons in the metro Detroit area throughout 2023. Recently, Owen TV's Joe Johnson traveled to Livonia for a fun event where he got to mingle with a few celebrities. The pop culture convention known as Astronomicon returned to Livonia, Michigan, kicking off on Friday, March 3rd and running through Sunday, March 5th. Vendors offered comic books, action figures, art, and more, and celebrities and comic book creators gave visitors an unforgettable experience. Uh, we have a lot of things going on. The clerks are here, Jay Muse is here, Joey Lauren Adams is here, um, the fans are here, the snow is here. It wouldn't be Astronomicon without weather, um, but again, we all made it here. Um, it's Saturday, we're having a good time. It's The doors have been open like an hour and it's already packed. Uh, can't wait to see how the rest of the day goes. Um, thank everybody for coming and we'll see you next year. Now in its sixth year, Astronomicon began in 2018 in Sterling Heights and has moved to various locations over the years as it continued to grow. This year's event was held at Burton Manor in Livonia and attracted pop culture enthusiasts from all over. Um, well, we do wrestling, we do horror, we do pop culture, the three main genres that we do. The first year was all our friends from the industry that we took a chance on us. Um, as we had proof of concept, we have gotten bigger and kind of had our little goals in mind, and, and that's where our guest list comes into play. Oh, Alain, hi. I'm Michael Berryman, and why are you, how come you're not here? You should come here to this Astronomicon. It's, look at all the people, we're having fun. It's a weekend, it's snowing outside. We act like children, we're kids. I want to buy a comic book. Because my mom threw mine away when I went to college. Also braving the weather was Saturday Night Live veteran John Lovitz, who arrived on Saturday. He hosted a Q&A with his fans on Sunday. This I think the third one I've done, and um, uh, I understand more what it's about. The first time I was like, <laughs> but now I do, and I I feel like uh, when I was on Saturday Night Live, I did my liar character. And, uh, it, you know, the whole country was imitating me. It was crazy. And then uh, D Gary Trudeau of Doomsbury did a whole cartoon on me, on my character. And my dad goes, you're in Doomsbury. You know, and I, it hit me like, oh, I'm part of pop culture. And it's kind of an honor to be part of it. And kind of, uh, I don't know, mind-blowing. This year's event boasted a reunion of actors from Kevin Smith's View Askew universe. Unfortunately, a Friday night snowstorm kept Smith and Jason Lee from attending, but fans were able to meet with Jason Mewes, Ethan Supley, Harley Quinn Smith, and the stars of the film that started it all, 1994's Clerks, Brian O'Halloran and Jeff Anderson. It's always fun. You know, I, for like 15 years they were trying to get me to do these cons and I didn't want to do them because I, I just didn't know what to expect. Yeah. I don't know the cosplay world very good and I was a little leery about doing it, but I got to tell you, <laughs> coming out and meeting people is just the best part of the job. I mean, it's um, to meet military people and, you know, people who have been in hard times in their life and say the movies helped them through it. it it's, it's the most, it's really, it makes you feel good. Like I fly home on the plane and I'm like, what just happened this weekend? A bunch of people said very nice things to me and I just signed autographs. It's very strange, very strange. I'm a fan of the other, the other guests who are here. Uh, you know, people who uh, I love seeing again and again. Uh, you know, Joey Lauren Adams is here. I got to hang out with him. Ming is, is always at these things, so it's always fun hanging with him and finding some weird dive bar somewhere in some back town of some alley. Uh, and then, you know, you have other great people like Behrman and, and other people here who are just I'm fans of. Plus the vendors and these artisans. Every area has these local artisans that make things that are really, really cool. There's some guys here that sell some really unique one-of-a-kind kind of toys that are really fun to look at. But then meeting the fans, especially now that Clerks 3 has been released and a lot of the fan base has now seen it, they're coming uh, to, uh, to tell us how they enjoyed the film or not enjoyed the film. Either way, I'm ready for it. Uh, we just tell them strictly, eh, no refunds, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, but otherwise, it's a lot of fun. Plus, I get to hang out with my, my, with my friends, Jeff Anderson, Jason Muse, and Austin and Trevor and, and Kevin's uh, daughter, uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, so it's a lot of fun when we have a good, you know, a large group of us here at once. 
Clerks 3 was released in September of 2022 and reunites Dante and Randall as well as Jay and Silent Bob. The movie is a semi-fictional account of the making of Clerks and has some surprisingly serious moments. I'm gonna make a movie! Well, here it was with Clerks 3, you know, reliving and remaking somewhat of uh, the original film. Uh, first off, I was like, wow, we can dupe an audience into paying twice for seeing almost the same film again? That's quite clever, Kevin. Uh, but yes, along the same lines of uh, Kevin telling his story about the making of kind of a thing, uh, it was great. Uh, it was a really weird kind of time machine moment for us being back at that original store, which hasn't really changed at all. Uh, we joked about it that, it, you know, Kevin said it was like frozen in amber, you know, from the Jurassic period. Uh, but that's another, that's its own landmark in itself. And Jeff has said this before, that it, the store itself is its own character, so. Before we actually shot Clerks 3, there was a different script that Kevin had written for Clerks 3. And uh, when he wrote the original script, it was a completely made-up story. So it didn't, it didn't sort of resonate. It didn't feel like it belonged in the Clerks world. Like, you know, Clerks 1 was a piece of Kevin's life. Clerks 2 was another piece of Kevin's life about being in your 30s and sort of being directionless. And that original one that he did didn't quite feel right. So when he rewrote it and he wrote the, the, the version that we've all now seen, that was again a little more personal and I think that's what resonates like uh, it, it tied in a little better it was bittersweet reading it because you, you knew it was finally the end uh, but I think it, I think it worked out and went like the way we it should have gone down it was sort of a nice send-off uh, it was weird before it came out because you weren't sure how the fans were gonna feel uh, but I've done a bunch of these shows now since it's come out and everybody seems to feel like it was sort of the right send-off for these characters um, it was very moving, it was very touching, it was, you know, it, it drew from Kevin's own experience, his own experience uh, tackling uh, with a heart attack and, and dealing with the repercussions afterwards, and the repercussions it, it affected with her family and his friends and stuff like that. So the emotion was there, it was into the script, so to give the, res the, the script the proper respect uh, and the proper performance, um, you know, you, you got to up your game somewhat. Uh, and so um, it took me 30 years, but uh, <laughs> we got there to get a performance that really evoked emotions out of the fan base that really has stuck with them. You hate people, but I love gatherings. Isn't it ironic? Is it the end? What's next for you? Uh -huh. You know, I pitched the idea of doing Clerks 4. Like, it usually takes me a long time to sign up for these movies, but I told Kevin if he does Clerks 4, where Randall buries Dante in the pet cemetery, I would totally do it. This guy is coming in to mess with me. I see him coming out of the corner of my eye, and I'm trying to talk faster and faster to get it wrapped up before he's behind me messing with me and shit. Wrap it up, Kevin. Wrap it up. Such, such a camera hog. Such a, he just can't get enough every, of the camera. Every actor wants to be a director, right? I'm That's telling you. I'm telling you. So when you say pet cemetery, we're bringing him back to life, right? That, I would love to see it. And Everybody I pitched that idea to says, I would see that. But we just keep them in the cooler back there and we march them out. I would totally do that movie. I'd sign up for it today. To keep up to date on upcoming events, visit Astronomicon.com. You can also find them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. In Livonia, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. On behalf of the hardworking ON TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Marco Ifredi. Thanks for watching.